Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome, welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive by Transformation Talk Radio, transformationradio.fm. I'm excited about today's show with Christine Upchurch. Why? For a lot of reasons. One is that there is a vibration that many people cannot literally put their finger on. What's happening? What's going on? What does it even mean? That is the vibration of change. And even though you might think you're stuck in your life, there is a vibration that is happening all around us. You know, we touched upon it a little bit in the last show. Um, and what happens to us when we deny ourselves the experience or the journey of change and are not aware that change carries a vibration? Christine Upchurch has created a way for us not just to understand the vibration of change, but to participate. Uh, and many of you know Christine as a writer, a teacher inspirational speaker. She's a phenomenal energy healer, host of the international syndicated show, The Christine Upchurch Show. And by the way, she's been on many other radio shows. She's been on television. She's also the co-creator of 111 and 222 Activations. You're going to hear about these today. But having developed this understanding, having taught practitioners now, from four continents, how to do this work. We're now looking at what it means to create the energetic nature of change. And so Christine has created the vibration of change. It's a synthesis, various approaches she's used. But what you're going to hear about today is how she has tapped in to her experience as a researcher and experience as a healer, to working with people all over the planet to understand, to understand passion, happiness, and living a more vibrant life. How do we do it? you got to be ready to tap into that vibration of change. Christine, it's great to have you here. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Pat. It's so good to be here. I always enjoy chatting with you. Yeah. Wow, this is big. The vibration of change is big. Because what do you make of what I said before about, before we talk about what's going on in the world, Mm -hmm. what do you make about what I said about the vibration of change happening, even though we might be stuck? Yeah, it's it's always there. It's always ready for us, whether we're Mm -hmm. talking about um, as individuals or even globally, that it's really a matter of shifting our vibration to ride the wave of change because that's really the key is is to 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 attune ourselves so that we can go towards positive lasting change yeah i mean i would love to talk with you about this vibration of change and what's going on in the world you know what are you seeing from the people you're working with whether they're clients or students you know are, are people feeling they're in the midst of something and they just cannot put their finger on it? Yeah. Or are they feeling like it's way beyond anything that they should even pay attention to? What's happening? It's yes and yes. Um, people <laughs> are both overwhelmed. People are sometimes stuck. People are like gung-ho, like, yeah, there's some change underway. People are perplexed about what to do. It's, it's, it's a mix of things, but it's all because that there's a lot of shifting underway. And what is happening to us is... As things shift, as things become illuminated within our own lives, become illuminated, you know, nationally, globally, um, we're standing here in our lives, and it might have been just fine for a long time, you know? Okay, marriage is fine, my career is fine, my health is adequate, 
you know, and then all of a sudden it's kind of like something's not right. And it might be full blown crisis, uh, such as a health crisis, divorce situation, or it might just be, wow, everything's the same as it was before. And huh. something just feels off. Uh Oh, it must be me. What does this mean? And, and people sort of turn into the, this internal kind of uh, crisis where they're feeling like um, they're doing something wrong because the life no longer fits them. But it's all yeah. because things are changing and things are changing rapidly and we're being invited and sometimes kicked in the pants mm-hmm. to move forward, to step into this vibration of change so that we can ride to the wa- ride this wave to to more fulfilling life in a variety of ways. Yeah. Reaching, reaching, reaching. And, you know, part of the idea of reaching means that we don't think that we have what we need in the moment we're in. Mm -hmm. But that has a vibration all in itself. The idea of thinking that we just don't have that thing, whatever it is, we're missing something, Uh Christine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and that's a vibration. It is a vibration. Uh And, you know, it's funny because... um, I had a couple of different experiences that led me to be very perplexed about the nature of change. And for a long time, I compartmentalized things. Um, I know I've talked about this on your show before of how I had the early stages of lymphoma. I had cancer. Doctors Uh had nothing to offer me early on. And ultimately, what they would have done is put me on chemotherapy for the rest of my life. It was called palliative chemotherapy. And I did a whole lot of exploring. This is like decades ago before... There were shows like this before there were lots of books on the shelf about, you know, healing. And um, but I I shifted my life in a a number of ways. And ultimately, I healed myself without any medical treatment. And a big portion of that had to do with the the belief, the visualization and the, the, the letting go. And so, you know, I had lesions sort of neck to ankle and all of them disappeared, you know, after um, doing a lot of inner work and then ultimately moving from New Jersey to Seattle because I was, I was intuitively guided to do that. So to make a long story short, I looked at that and I thought, belief is everything. I believed myself to be filled with light. I believed myself to be healed. I believed myself to be in a state of being that I wanted to be, and therefore it was. So, you know, belief, yeah. belief, belief. Okay. Fast forward a few years. You know, I went from being a... Um, a research statistician in cancer research at Fred Hutch to um, an energy healer, right? And I had taken this kind of training that that was um, where the philosophy is that you basically just allow and observe and you sort of play in the person's vibrational field. And there really is no directing. There's no attachment. You're not trying to fix something for somebody. But I tell you, when I was early in my career as an energy healer, I thought, I'm not sure I can do this. You know, the teacher, oh, he was really good, and I know he could have facilitated a change. But anyway, so one of the earlier clients I had was dragged in by uh-huh. her, by his his wife, um, and he had an amazing healing, even though he had, did not believe in it. So it was really confusing to me because there he was saying, I don't believe in this woo-woo work. And I'm thinking, uh-huh. I don't believe I can do it. And he had this healing. I'm thinking, okay, well, if belief is everything, and uh-huh. neither of us believed you know, in his healing, then what the heck happened? Uh-huh. So for a long time, I kind of compartmentalized, okay, on the one hand, when you're doing healing, you know, facilitating healing, it works one way. And when you're doing self-healing you know, and working in with con- conscious manifestation techniques, it, it works another way. And Yet with my analytic mind, yes, I, you know, I'm an intuitive uh, and I'm a healer. And yet I've got that, that statistician piece that really, really wants to understand what the heck this is about. So I put th- this question out to the universe. What is it? Not, not, just, not just healing because, you know, really we'll, we'll talk about this. People do want to heal, but it really goes much beyond that yeah. in people's lives. But I, I asked the universe, so you know, is there some sort of global model that covers all the approaches to healing, all the approaches to transformation, all the approaches to changing our life circumstances? And if so, what is it? Yeah, and you know, right. you know how it is, Pat, when you, you sort of put that question out there to the universe and then you have the guts to sort of let go? Uh, you know, I did that. It's like, okay, I'm perplexed, you know, powers that be. Can you please illuminate this for me at some point when it's appropriate for me to know? 
And then one day, all of a sudden, boom, it hit me. It got the head-to-toe shivers. I understood that there is a, a, a model, a, a way of looking at positive lasting change that encompasses the conscious manifestation techniques. It encompasses the, the energy healing. It encompasses the behavioral approaches to change. All these different approaches for, to institute change in our lives, it kind of is this, this, this umbrella that, that, you know, where everything fit underneath it. Yeah. And, it and by seeing it in that way, it helped me to understand that we can approach healing transformation and changes in our life in a more conscious way when we understand not only the truth about the vibration of change, but also the truth about ourselves and our own personal relationship with change. Yeah. And you know, what I love about this, we'll talk about this when we come back from break, is that, you know, this, you know, this idea that you're bringing to the forefront, the vibration of change explains a lot you know, all the folks that were thinking to themselves, I did my vision board, it's not happening. Mm. Or I've joined match.com, it's not happening. Um, It starts to explain not only why things show up the way they do, but how to have them show up exactly the way we want them to. That's what I think is so exciting about this, because we can test our vibration. Christine Upchurch is in the house, we're talking about the vibration of change. What is it that we need to do that taps into this idea of positivity? Yeah, there is a model, as we like to say, yeah, positivity rules. When we come back, what happens to us when we're not able to get that vibe of Thrive? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you looking for positive, lasting change, greater well-being, better relationships, and improved life circumstances? The Vibration of Change is here to help you navigate change in a new way. As someone who has been on my own transformational journey and who has helped facilitate change for thousands, I've discovered something which goes beyond manifestation techniques, beyond behavioral changes, and beyond systems of healing. There are universal principles governing all change which determine whether we remain stuck or whether we manifest our dreams. Understanding these principles as well as your own personal tendencies can be life-changing. Join me, Christine Upchurch, at East West Bookshop in Seattle on October 2nd for an experiential workshop. Step into your vibration of change and empower yourself in a new way. For more information or to register, go to christineupchurch.com. That's christineupchurch.com or visit eastwestbookshop.com. Have you ever wanted to learn about the colors of your chakras? Well, now's your chance. Lynn Brown, host of Get Into It, is hosting an event Friday, November 4th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. in Mount Vernon. Every person will get a reading on the most prominent color in their aura. Join Lynn Brown November 4th at the Riverwalk Studio in Mount Vernon. To register for this event, call 360-588-4713. That's 360-588-4713. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, a.m. 1150, and Transformation Time. Talk Radio. Beyond being this amazing neurologist, inventor, author, Dr. Dan Cohen has been called to look at technology and look at personal and spiritual development and merge these together. This technology uses the healing and psycho-spiritual effects of synchronized sounds, vibrations, electromagnetic fields, and how that interacts with us in our nervous system in what we're calling the Soltech chair. 
the Soltec Lounge induces profound levels of relaxation that transition over time into deep meditative states. The synchronized sound vibration and magnetic field induce these states. The subject doesn't have to work at it. To learn more, go to soltecwellbeing.com. That's S-O-L-T-E-C, well-being. Sleeping in my bed. Sleeping in my bed. Wow. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It's so great to have all of you tuning us in and turning us on. Christine Upchurch is in the house. It's so great to have her here. Christine, before we talk about this thing that I love to talk about, positivity, um, I'd love for folks to know about your radio show and what's the best way for them to find out more about you. You bet. Um, The radio show is The Christine Upchurch Show, and it's Fridays at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can reach me through my website, christineupchurch.com. That's C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, U-P-C-H-U-R-C-H.com. Yeah. Uh, And for those of you out there, if you're thinking to yourself, wow, we really like to have more of the vibration of change with us in our workplace, with me in my life, I would suggest you get a hold of Christine and make that happen. Um, let's talk about this thing called positivity. I'm really stuck on it. I've Mm -hmm. been stuck on it for a really long time. Um, you know, came out of the whole crust busting, uh, phase that I was in. Uh, but positivity is an interesting perspective. Someone said to me about two days ago, man, I don't know how you can stay positive given what's going on in the world, what's going Mm -hmm. on in this country. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? I'm going to ask Christine about that because I think it's a choice. Right. Well, I I think that you can define positivity in a couple of different ways. Mm -hmm. You can define it as I'm getting exactly what I want in every moment. Or you can define it as this is heading in the right direction and I'm feeling good about it. And those are two different things. Mm -hmm. Because the, you know, heading in the right direction, it's like there's some really awful stuff going on in our world, including within our country and it's it's terrifying at some sometimes, but if you look at it as this global process of illumination, so that there can be a clearing, a release, and a transformation of of the very fabric of our world, the fabric built of instead of greed and control, rather mutual respect and love, then the horrible things may be a step towards that. So you can view some of the bad stuff as. It's sad. I've got compassion for it. it. I feel grief about it. And there's something very positive about what's unfolding. And God bless those souls who are participating in this particular way of, you know, being victims or, or you know, being, you know, playing roles that are rather unpleasant, so to speak. And, and that's helping us to birth a new world. Uh-huh. Um. The world is going to, you know, give birth to this new venue, whether we want it to or not. Exactly. Yep. And mm-hmm. is it going to be a C-section or is it going to be exactly. a natural childbirth? <laughs> yeah. And am I going to get a few drugs along the way so <laughs> yes. I don't really have to feel the pain? Yeah. Um, you know, but this is really, um, this is really the time where we get to tap into that vibration of change, but also the vibration of positive change. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think yeah. we're talking about. Uh, the the nastiness of the word change that many people really have come to know, mm-hmm. like the nastiness of change every time it's mentioned in the workplace, right? Right. right. Uh, or every time it's even mentioned in a, in a relationship, a love relationship. Yeah. You know, everybody goes a little crazy about that. Right. right. Um, but there is a science of this change, isn't there? Well, yes and no. I think that <clears throat> there, there is in a sense in that... Um... How do I put this? It's it's like in quantum physics where certain certain things have two properties. They are both a particle and a wave. And I liken that to us in our human lives as having like like the particle form is our current reality. And we've got the wave form where we are actually riding the wave from, you know, where we're at to an, another particle form of our future reality, right? And so Really, what I think that most of us want is we there's certain aspects of 
our future reality that we want. It might be a a loving, supportive partner. It might be, um, you know, being in a career where we feel like we are of service to people, and yet we are also supporting ourselves. It might be a, a really nice, you know, living environment. I mean, there are all sorts of positive changes that I think we long for, and that we might be very specific about them. We might not be. But in a sense, there, there are all these different waves that we can ride to various new particle forms, you know, so to speak. And the question is, which one are we going to pick? And can we catch the wave to that place? Yeah. And catching the wave means any number of things. But I want to go back to something that you said earlier, which really pinpoints it. Catching the waves means we're giving up all resistance <laughs> to it. And the idea of giving up the resistance is a big topic, right? Right. right. It is. It, yeah. and It's and essential. Though. It is. It's got to be. And, and what I basically say is um, experiencing positive, lasting change is completely dependent upon our energetic relationship with what is. Now... You know, if, if we are feeling hmm, resistant, if we are feeling, oh gosh, we're like we want to, that we're judging our current situation, if we're feeling like we want to step away from it, anything but that, you know, that that kind of resistance, then that's the kind of energetic rela- relationship we have with what is. In fact, what that means is, if you think of um, the the what is the 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 current particle form of our reality as being like this um, piece of metal and we've got or or it's a magnet and and we've also got um, how we're feeling and it we're either getting magnetized towards it because the poles sort of attract or we're resisting it and therefore it's kind of like the we can't actually get to what is because we're sort of pushing ourselves away. So we're sort of like the, you know, we're same poles kind of pushing each other away. So the, the question becomes, if you want to go from where you're at now to a new form of reality and, you know, you, you have to be magnetized to what is. It's really simple. It's kind of like if we said, okay, well, if you're going to, if you're under, say, a cedar tree right now and you want to walk across the way to um, an oak tree, if you keep saying, I want to go stand under that oak tree, it's it. most people will understand that you have to take your feet and walk over to climb under that oak tree. Mm-hmm. Okay. But here's what most people are doing. All right. Think of it. Okay. Let's say that your car is parked in New York. Yeah. Right. And you keep saying, I want to drive my car from, you know, to Seattle. I want, I want Seattle. I want to drive to Seattle. I want to drive to Seattle. But you're standing on a street corner in Chicago <laughs> complaining about not getting your car to Seattle. That, that's essentially what, what we typically do through our resistance, through our, our judgment of what is. And what you have to do is you have to get back to New York, get your butt in the car, and drive it to Seattle. And so from an energetic level, that's exactly what people need to learn to do is to create this kind of magnetized, what I call vibrational ease about what is. And so it doesn't mean you necessarily have to embrace what is. I mean, that's that's like high level spiritual work. A lot of people, probably a lot of your listeners work on this on a daily basis, on a moment (laughs) to moment basis. And yes, that will get you into that vibration but there are other ways of getting into that yeah. vibration when you don't necessarily love or even surrender to what is. I love this. And by the way, let's mention this now, Christine, because you're going to be doing a, a workshop. You're going to be at East West Books. Yes. Uh, shop. yes. So tell folks about that for sure. And this is a way for folks to get started. Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, I know we'll talk about this the next segment. Yeah. But yep. um, not only will I be talking about the energetics of change, this this big picture model that is actually quite simple. It's it's beautifully simple. And that once you can understand it and understand how all these different approaches to change can fall under this umbrella, and you'll be able to start seeing, oh, well, this is how conscious manifestation techniques work. And, oh, and this is how the behavioral approaches to change work. And this is how energy healing works. And this is the way gratitude journaling works. And so when you see all these different pieces from your own spiritual training, from your own, you know, from your own sort of conscious path, you'll be able to understand how it works sometimes and, and why it doesn't work other times. And so 
I'll be presenting that. And also, I will be providing people with um, five different change profiles. Everybody has a tendency to, to interact with change in a different way. And uh-huh. it's very helpful to know what your personality type is because your personality type will determine what is helpful for you for creating positive, lasting change and what if some of these wonderful techniques can actually impede, can actually get in the way of creating positive, lasting change. And so it's really, it's an experiential workshop where we'll, we'll I'll present some of these things, these concepts again, and, and I will have people doing um, some, you know, work in journals, partner work, and we'll have some discussion as well to help empower people to, to sort of see change in a new way, see how they as individuals interact with change, and then move forward in, you know, creating a new kind of uh, roadmap for creating more awesome. positive change in, in their lives. Yeah, when we come back from break, we're going to talk about what are some of these techniques for creating change. You know, this and much more right here with Christine Upchurch. We're going to take a short break, everyone. You know, a lot of techniques, but what are we really talking about here? Are we just talking about changing our minds? Or maybe we have to do something. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Sunshine on my shoulders makes me happy. Sky Siegel co-hosts one of today's most popular psychic shows, Angels and Answers, with Artie Hoffman as she communicates healing messages from the spirit world. These messages can be astounding, enlightening, and life-changing. Born with the God-given talent of inner guidance and the amazing ability to heal, Sky has healed thousands of people. Schedule a reading with Sky now. Call 908-500-1474 and visit skyofangels.com. Do you want to achieve your goals? Do you want to strengthen relationships with others? Do you want to improve your financial status? Colette Marie Steffen is partnering with Mark Kettenbach to bring an energetic upgrade online experience. Unfold and develop your full potential. Visit energeticupgrade.com today for more information. That's energeticupgrade.com. Are you looking for positive, lasting change, greater well-being, better relationships, and improved life circumstances? The Vibration of Change is here to help you navigate change in a new way. As someone who has been on my own transformational journey and who has helped facilitate change for thousands, I've discovered something which goes beyond manifestation techniques, beyond behavioral changes, and beyond systems of healing. There are universal principles governing all change which determine whether we remain stuck or whether we manifest our dreams. Understanding these principles, as well as your own personal tendencies, can be life-changing. Join me, Christine Upchurch, at East West Bookshop in Seattle on October 2nd for an experiential workshop. Step into your vibration of change and empower yourself in a new way. For more information or to register, go to christineupchurch.com. That's christineupchurch.com or visit eastwestbookshop.com. Hi, this is Leslie Fontaine. Have you ever tried to just shift your present moment experience? Do it now. Just move your energy in a direction and watch what happens. Often we panic at the blocks that come up and we just stop. But today, try not to do that. Continue from your heart or solar plexus to shift in that new direction, whether it's in the middle of an argument, in the middle of some depression you're feeling, or some discouragement. What happens for you as you do that. The opportunities are amazing. Just hold that space. If you're ready to shift into your best life, visit me at lesliefontaine.com and let's talk about unfolding all that you want to be, do, and have. You'll find sessions, classes, audio products, all to help remove the blocks and move you into your potential. And listen to my show, Share Alchemy on Transformation Talk Radio, Wednesdays at 10 Pacific and 1 Eastern. Almost always makes me high. If I had a day that I could give you.
Hey, everybody, welcome back. Christine of Church is in the house. And as we said before, you can go to the website, Christine, go to Christine's website, christineofchurch.com for sure. Uh, you can tune into her uh, show right here on Fridays, 11 o'clock on transformationtalkradio.com and KKNW. Uh, and for those of you out there, if you're thinking, wow, I can use more of this in my organization, I could use more of this in my life, you can contact Christine directly. What's the best way for people to contact you? Uh, there's a, an easy way to email me or you can call my office. Both mm. All that information is on um, my website. Or if you're just listening over the airwaves and you're old fashioned and don't have yeah. connection, you can call 425-999-9836, 425-999-9836. Wow. You know, uh, for those of you out there, we're talking quite a bit about this thing called change. But what Christine's talking about is a vibration of change. And this idea of, is it hard? Is it easy? What is it? How do we create it? And that's the workshop that, that, you know, you're going to be talking about this a lot. You're going to be at East West Books. And again, right. remind folks of when that is. It's October 2nd, which is a Sunday from 1230 till six. So it's a, an afternoon of, of learning, an afternoon of discussing, an afternoon of sort of applying a new model to your own life. And one of the interesting things that I like to have people do, Pat, is to actually sort of look at their their personalized profile, right, and then figure out, well, is it the same across different areas? Because what happens is sometimes people will have the same approach to change, whether we're talking, say, career, um, working on abundance, making changes in your life, like your living situation, friendship. Um, and then when it comes to one area, say, you know, looking for a significant other, they have taken a different approach and they can actually see, oh, well, this is my natural tendency here and, and this is what my strengths are. And and over here, when it comes to like the significant relationship, I'm I'm going about it against my nature. And so it's, uh, it's helpful to kind of assess, um, you know, w- what your approach is and if you're sort of in alignment with your approach. In terms yeah. of, I mean, it, 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 what what your your natural approach is? Yeah, yeah. Alignment is the thing. Yeah. You know, this idea of not being aligned, and now we're talking about vibration mm-hmm. and vibrational change. Right. And you know, we know when we're out of alignment with positivity, or even out of alignment with uh, thriving in life. We know it. We feel it. It's yeah. ugly. Yeah. Uh, but and, you, we don't know what to do with it. So right. I know you're going to be helping us understand the techniques. How do, how do we create this? Well, you know, it's funny because there's a lot of information out there about how to create this. And in fact, there's some wonderful spiritual teachers out there who some of who, whom have been on my show, on your show, and they talk about embracing what is. And it's it's really deep work. To, I mean, yes, we can get to this point where we embrace what is most of the time, but on a moment-to-moment basis, you know, I remember, gosh, about two years ago, I thought I had, I thought I was there, you know, I've done all this inner work and I was embracing what is, and then I got shingles on my face mm. and I had the hardest time embracing what is. So it's really, you know, there are they're various layers to it. But if you can embrace what is, then you are essentially magnetized to the current particle form, you know, that place that you need to be to, to ride the wave because all the places you want to get to start from where you're at. So if you can embrace what is, that that's very powerful. However, most of us have a hard time with that. And so there, there are also different approaches. When you think about, say, visualization, some of these conscious manifestation techniques, they can be really powerful to put you into that vibration of embracing what is. Think about visualizing something, okay? Yeah. So you're, you're, you're thinking about the details. You've closed your eyes. You're in this meditative state. You're feeling like it's in the here and now, and you start to get excited, and you start to get, like, into this vibration. Like, you can feel the energy, the, the buzzing in your body, right? Because you're embracing what is, because what is is in your mind. It's the future that you want to create. And so, but you're creating the vibration of what is. And so... Even though you might hate what is in your current place, in your current yeah. moment, current particle form, if you can get yourself into that that conscious manifestation sort of buzz of it's already here and I'm really excited about it, you're creating the vibration of embracing what is, which allows you to to, to move to that, that next particle form, that next reality <laughs> that you want. 
there are other ways as well. Like when, when you're out of balance, uh, like going out into nature for some people is a really good way of what I call creating that vibrational ease. So you're magnetized to what is. Um, sometimes people will go through a lot of, you know, um, sort of uh, therapy or a lot of inner work to surrender to something in particular. I know that for me, when I was working on healing myself of cancer, I'd, I was doing all these manifestation techniques. I had changed yeah. my diet. I was eating macrobiotically. Um, I was doing yoga. I was in therapy dealing with my issues. I mean, I was like, I was cleaning out my system left and right, and yet I was really stuck. And there was a moment, Pat, when all of a sudden I realized I was like 28 years old. I had no control over my body. I might never have children. I might never get to travel. I might not live past 30, 35. And I began to cry. And I began, that crying went into sobbing. And it was this huge, huge release, like, I have no control. And in that moment, I felt this this presence, and I heard, it was like this disembodied voice that says, "Uh aha, now you get it. Now Mm. we can work together to create what you want. And so I recognized looking back that that surrender was a key piece, created that vibrational ease. I was so busy resisting that cancer, which what was, you know, that was what is for me at that moment, right? What was at that moment. And I, I was just like doing everything to get rid of it, to attack it, to clear it, to anything but that, right? And oh, yeah, it's got lessons for me, but oh, I don't really want to be there. Lessons, yes. No, I don't want to be there. (laughs) And yet that surrender when, oh my gosh, I just let go of control, that put me into that vibration, that vibrational ease, that vibration of of being accepting or allowing of what is. Yeah. So I think what you're talking about too is for us to get a a self-awareness about what we do with things. Oh, yeah. You know, how do we approach it, right? Right. And it's, it's not all about our internal work. That, that, that was right. the beauty of what I learned as a healer, right? There was somebody who was very resistant to being in my office who didn't believe in my woo-woo work that I was doing. And there I am facilitating this. And I'm just coming from this place of allowing and accepting. And so I was creating this vibrational ease around him. I was being accepting of what is. And my vibration interacted with his vibration which I believe sort of entrained his vibration to, to create that kind of, you know, accepting what is. And that was key. And so when you think in terms of we're not the only ones creating the, the vibration. Yes, a lot of our inner work relates to that. And, and, and I encourage people to do the inner work. But we need to be very cognizant of all the other vibrations that are mm-hmm. coming into our presence, affecting our vibration because we get entrained. And so um, it's sometimes the lowest common denominator is like the, the, the vibration that, that can win and unless you're really skilled at sort of blocking things out. So if you have somebody who's just a real negative person or a real naysayer or believes that, okay, you say you're going to get a new career, you're going to start a career working in a, a realm of, of like, you know, alternative medicine or some, some sort of service to others – and you're living with somebody who says, ah, you'll never make that work. You can't make any money at that. Or even if you, they don't say it, but you know that they're judging your desire for that, that vibration is affecting your vibration. And it's actually sort of murking up the, the, your acceptance of what is and, and trusting that you can get it. So basically, it, it's, it has an effect. It absolutely does. It has an effect. The media we that we, we observe, no. yeah, all that stuff affects our vibration. And if we can't um, come to this sort of acceptance of where we're at, you know, if, if we feel the judgment from a family member, if we feel the, um, the kind of dis- dismay over where we're at from somebody else, it, mm-hmm. it really can, can, you know, muddy up our vibration in a way that keeps us from getting back to what is energetically so that we can ride the wave of change. Mm -hmm. Isn't it even harder when it's somebody we love or somebody we respect? Yes, it is. It really is. And um, it's, it's just so tricky because we have to navigate how to stay in integrity with our soul and set boundaries where we need to, in order to create that vibrational ease, to create that, 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 direction and and path to stepping into what we truly desire. Yeah. I mean, it is really this level of awareness that starts to look more like a dance 
uh, mm -hmm. than a, a glass of water, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, it um, is a dance but, for sure. Exactly. And this is the work you do with people. Uh, you know, there are so many different personality types that show up in the world. Yeah. Uh, and what I like to do is take a short break when we come back, talk about what some of these are and how you're going to help people look at this uh, in the work workshop that you're doing. Because, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm not a good judge of myself. That's why I've got Linda for sure. Uh, and Benny. Uh, but for the most part, I don't think I'm different. I think many, many people need help getting an idea of how they're showing up in the world. We're going to take a short break, everyone. Christine Upchurch in the house. We'll be right back. I wonder how your body takes Inside of someone else's place Pull away your eyes, there's nothing left to hear. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show, talk radio to thrive by. I am so thrilled to be talking to all of you. We have got talk radio for all of us. Are you ready and willing and able to accept all of the abundance you can muster up in your life? Check us out at drpatcho.com, transformationtalkradio.com, transformationradio.fm. Have you ever wanted to learn about the colors of your chakras? Well, now's your chance. Lynn Brown, host of Get Into It, is hosting an event Friday, November 4th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. in Mount Vernon. Every person will get a reading on the most prominent color in their aura. Join Lynn Brown November 4th at the Riverwalk Studio in Mount Vernon. To register for this event, call 360-588-4713. That's 360-588-4713. Are you feeling stagnant or blocked in your love life, career, health, or finances? Experiencing difficulty focusing or setting and achieving goals? Tune in to Spiritual Diagnostics Radio with psychic visionary healers Carol Dorian and Suzanne Evans. Discover the cause and effect of unwanted patterns in life. Tune in every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit spiritualdeed.com. Brand consultant and coach Jen Morgan is here with Radically Distinct Radio to help maximize your brand's power to produce results. Whether you're a person with a dream and unsure where to start or a CEO of a successful company wondering what's next, Jen Morgan and the RAD Method empowers you to play to your strengths and focus your competitive edge so you can show up in the world as your most powerful brand. Go to JenMorgan.com or call 206-972-5366. Are you looking for positive, lasting change, greater well-being, better relationships, and improved life circumstances? The Vibration of Change is here to help you navigate change in a new way. As someone who has been on my own transformational journey and who has helped facilitate change for thousands, I've discovered something which goes beyond manifestation techniques, beyond behavioral changes, and beyond systems of healing. There are universal principles governing all change which determine whether we remain stuck or whether we manifest our dreams. Understanding these principles, as well as your own personal tendencies, can be life-changing. Join me, Christine Upchurch, at East West Bookshop in Seattle on October 2nd for an experiential workshop. Step into your vibration of change and empower yourself in a new way. For more information or to register, go to christineupchurch.com. That's christineupchurch.com or visit eastwestbookshop.com. Wow, that's beautiful, Benny. Hey, everyone, welcome back. It's so great to have you here. For more about us, go to transformationtalkradio.com or go to the drpatshow.com. And certainly for Christine, you can go to christineupchurch.com. For those of you uh, asking about her upcoming event, it's going to be fabulous. It's at East West Books. 
Uh, and it is on, it, it, would you give folks the detail? I know it's on October 2nd, but October 2nd, folks would like to know more. And it starts at 1230 and it goes until 6. Um, so it'll huh? be a, you know, a, a nice afternoon of concentrated learning and experiencing and sharing and connecting. And it's, you know, I, I think that if you're interested in navigating change or understanding how change, is, you know, it's, it occurs for people and also globally, I think it's helpful um, that I encourage you to come. And it's, and really it's, it's simple. And yeah. yet how we implement it, we need to sort of strategize when it comes to our ourselves as individuals. Yeah. yeah, we really do. Because what the, the, the alternative to this is not really, it doesn't feel good. And the vibration of change is not going to stop. As a matter of fact, things are really accelerating. I mean, what does, I, I know we've got a, a few minutes left here, but I, I, I would like to talk to you about this whole idea about personality. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because, uh, you know, yeah. Pat, um, when I've, taught this the first time I didn't have the 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 personality profiles yet but I had some Mm -hmm. of the questions and it you know I I had people in the class who were both like sort of new to this kind of thing they really although they were on their paths they weren't as far advanced in some ways or they hadn't done as much you know reading and workshops and inner work as some of the others but across the board people got really excited about the, the questions and sort of helping to direct them in terms of what approaches to change were most beneficial to them and which approach, approaches might actually get in the way. Because that's, that's the kicker, Pat. There yeah. are some approaches out there that are wonderful. And we'll, we'll talk about some of that in a minute. And yet we get stuck with them. And you think, oh, I must not be doing it right. Well, it, the problem is typically that it's not the kind of thing that you should be doing, at least in most situations, because of the way you interact with change. It actually can get in the way. So there, you know, I talk about vibrational ease and I talk a lot more about like sort of creating that so we can be sort of energetically magnetized to, you know, what is so that we can, we can, we can, you know, ride the wave of change, positive change. Um, One of the ways that I personally can get into vibrational ease is climbing into a tub of hot water. I just love Ah, to take baths, right? I do too. And so I had had the question out there to the universe about, um, I know what some of the questions are, but I feel like there's some sort of structure to this. And all of a sudden there I am in the tub and boom, 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 boom. It just came through really clearly to me about how to create these profiles. Now, they, they have the analogy of of, you know, the, pl- the different roles that people play within the, the context of a play or a movie. They have, there, there are, yeah, there's the um, playwright of life. Now, the playwright yeah. of life is somebody who really, really likes to be very specific about what it is they want to manifest. You know the kind of person who says, oh, yeah. well, I want to date somebody and she needs to have red hair and she needs to be huh. between 5'4 and 5'7 and wavy hair would be nice green eyes would be good and she needs to have a really great sense of humor and I need to like her laugh. I mean, you know, you've, you've met people like this, right? And for me that, that doesn't exactly, you know, go with my grain. It sort of goes against my grain to be that specific, but there are some people who thrive on getting a manifest, very specific things, you know, or, or an extra $75 this week that's going to come in in whatever way, you know, and, and suddenly they'll manifest it and they're thrilled. Okay. They, they like the specifics of they like, they like to tell the universe exactly what they want. Mm-hmm. That is the playwright of life. Then there's the director of life. And directors of life are more about implementing the, the, the steps needed to get to change. They tend to be the ones to look at some sort of behavioral approaches where they have things mapped out. They thrive on the organization of putting the pieces together to get from point A to point B. Then there is the producer of life. Now, the producer is one who tends to look at what they're manifesting, what they want to manifest in two different ways. They have a tendency to sort of get into it and sort of behave like a director. And then all of a sudden, they'll, they'll pull out for a while and they'll just sort of observe, how are things unfolding? Has my manifestation come here yet? Have I created this change yet? Right. So it's sort of like this in and out kind of thing. Then there is the actor of life. And the actor of life tends to navigate towards change in a very emotionally based way. 
And yes, emotions are important for everybody, but but the actor of life typically is just much more in tune with their emotions and using that as sort of their compass. And then the fifth and final personality profile is the patron of life. Now, the patron of life is not a passive thing. A patron of life shows up fully and says, okay, universe, what changes are you going to bring to me? What, what, what production are you going to share with me? And, <laughs> and, and so they sort of view, they view the universe as kind of like their parent. It's kind of like, um, it's, it's not immature, but it's kind of like the way a two-year-old trusts that, yes, they know they need to eat, but they're, they're going to let, you know, mom or dad kind of decide what it is, do the shopping and right. create it and, and then cook it for them. And every once in a while they might say, oh, I really want spaghetti tonight, mommy, you know, <laughs> and, and they will get it. But more often than not, it's about showing up in a, in a very sort of enthusiastic way for what the universe is bringing to them. So in terms of the extremes, we've got the playwright of life wants to specify everything and the patron of life that's kind of, kind of looking at things like, you know what? Whatever you bring to me is good. I just sort of, I, I, I want more good and I want to feel good. And, and, and if you inspire me to want to manifest something, I'll specify it. But besides that, you know, I'm, go, I'm along for the ride. And so with these extremes, there are certain things that are very beneficial. Like for the, the playwright of life, the conscious manifestation techniques where they can specify all the details, really powerful for them. However... Sometimes the gratitude journals that can be so powerful to people like the patron of life, they don't do so well. Because <sighs> if they're focusing on what is, they might not be so happy. They'd rather focus on what it is they're created, create, they want to create in order to sort of charge that vibration with enthusiasm for what is. So they actually have to be in a very particular kind of mindset they have to feel good before doing something like the, the gratitude journaling. Now, when you talk about the other extreme, the, the patron of life, right, they get nuts doing some of the conscious manifestation techniques. I've had people in my classes say, I get so frustrated because I can't seem to do it right. And I realized, you know, after going through the personality profile co- sort of questions, and they realize that they are actually a patron of life. And it actually pains them. It they, feels like too much responsibility. It feel, goes against their nature to specify exactly all these details that they want to create because they trust that the universe will bring them something wonderful. And every once in a while, they might want to say, yes, spaghetti, or whatever the adult <laughs> version of that is in their lives. I think so, it's spaghetti. <laughs> yes. Spaghetti is great, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it is. So, um, so that's kind of the, the nature of the, the profiling. And it helps people to understand what their natural tendencies are with the universe in terms of how they interact with them relating to life, how they interact with them, you know, with change. And by doing that and sort of looking at all these different approaches to change, you can sort of align yourself. Like, you know, for some people, the behavioral step-by-step organized approach to get from point A to point B would drive them nuts. But for the director of life, that actually charges them and makes them very happy with helps to make make them happy with what is, which allows the manifestation to come more easily. Wow. I love it. What a great show. I'm excited about this. I'm excited about being able to look at the vibration of change in a really simple and easy way. And I'm excited about you taking it out and about the workshop. Well, thank you for today, Christine. And if you would, one more time, give out your website, tell people how they can register for the workshop. You bet. Thanks so much, Pat, for having me on today. And you know, um, you can register for the workshop in a couple of different ways. Go to christineupchurch.com, go to events, click on the Vibration of Change East West Bookshop. That'll take you over to East West Bookshop's site, and you can register from there. Or you can go directly to eastwestbookshop.com, the events, scroll down to October 2nd, and you'll see me there, and I would love to see you there. Awesome. Wow, thank you so much. Christine Upchurch, everybody. Uh, This is really exciting. You're going to hear more from Christine about the vibration of change, but most importantly, about the ease by which this could happen. What an amazing platform. And don't forget to tune in to the Christine Upchurch Show tomorrow at 11. We're saying goodbye for now. Stay tuned for another hour of Transformation Talk Radio.
preceding audio was via a Skype call.